welcome back. This is the project for today. This stunning, highly colourful tiger um, with his felt bottom, because I put felt on the bottom. Um, if you're interested, stick around. Today's project starts off its life as a temporary body tattoo. In order to get a good fit for your mould, for the, the part of the tattoo that you want to use, get some of this film. It's very handy because you can use it, you can make a template of the tray, the inside of the tray where the, the tattoo is going to go. And because it's transparent, the laminate, you can see which part of the actual tattoo you want to use. So you can get it in a perfect position. And in this case, he has whiskers. So you don't want to chop off the poor tiger's whiskers. So this will help you get a better view of the tattoo for placement. Make sure when you do your template, that it sits sort of inside the edge. You don't want any parts of the tattoo going over the side. You want to keep as much of the tattoo inside that template shape. So pick the best position. As I say, make sure you get your whiskers in. No cat likes to be without his whiskers. <laughs> when you've decided on the position, the part of the tattoo that you want, Get one of these, I think they're called dotting tools. People use them in, in nail art. And just lightly score around the edge. Now, there's a transparent protective film that covers this tattoo. And by sort of scoring into it with that uh, dotting tool, you'll be able to give yourself an outline to cut around. And there you have it. That's basically how it starts its life. So the tattoo will actually go face down, um, but don't take off that transparent protective film just yet. So at the moment I'm putting it up the wrong way just to get an idea of where the edges are. And on this corner here, got a little bit that would overlap. Try and keep it as close to the edges as possible without having any overlapping. Position the tattoo on your mould and then when you get what you think you know, is a good all round shape, the perfect spot, you don't want to move it because you know, you've got it there and you think, oh, I might want to reposition it. Reposition it now. And um, these moulds are transparent so you can get a good look, you know, at the other side. Right. Perfect position. As I say, you don't want to move it now. Now here's a little trick. As I said, now between the surface of the mould and the face of the tattoo there's that very thin piece of protective plastic because these tattoos are actually very delicate so lift up your ta your tattoo try and get hold of that pesky piece of plastic and then very gently without cutting or scratching the mold lift up half the tattoo remove the transparent film and now there's going to be direct contact between the tattoo and the silicon mold once you push that flat down onto the silicone mold do not pick it up because you will now 
leave the transfer on the mould and the design will be ruined. Exactly the same thing with the other half. On the back of these tattoos is a is paper. Now this paper soaks up moisture very well and I just use these pampers because they are juicy. When you do anything like this, get things that are just 99.9% .9 water or something like that. You don't want any oils or any perfumes, any aloe vera, just water. If you don't want to use a, a wet wipe, just damp down a paper towel works just as well. Another thing I found is you don't really need to drown the tattoo. When you remove the paper backing from the tattoo, instead of just ripping it off or sliding it off, do this. Keep the backing close down to the tattoo and roll it. If you can see that it's not rolling, you can hit that spot with another little piece of water and hopefully smooth sailing. At this point, just damp it down a little bit more don't use a scrubbing motion because now the tattoo is very, it's almost like on a sort of a gel. The ink is almost on like a gel and if you rub it, you'll just rub off the transfer. Another little tip. You're never going to get all the air out from under there. Impossible. I got a pin and wherever I found a bubble, I, I would gently, I'm not stabbing it, you know, like Friday the 13th or anything, you'll just put in a little tiny needle prick in there so that the water can come out and it won't leave any marks on your mold. So now the fun bit. I know there are a lot of colours in here. I think there are 11 colours in all. But I think you'll agree that the, the end result is worth it. It's so colourful. Oh yes, also, when you're using UV resin and you put it under the lamp to cure, you may see smoke. Don't, don't be distressed, that is normal. And this stuff stinks, so please wear a mask. Okay, and then we just go through each colour. I chose these colours because I thought that they were... They, they all come from set. They come from two different sets. One from a company called Suma Box and another one from a company called Limino. And they are sets of colours. And they're really nice, they go well together. That's why I chose these particular colours, but you can choose any colours you like. My advice is make yourself a list of the colours you choose and what you're using them for. That way it's easier to sort of pick up each colour and go through each flower. Okay, and you, every time you put on a colour, remember to stick it under the cure lamp. So when I was doing a large lot of painting like this, I would do a little bit, put it under the cure lamp, do another little bit, because it's quite a big area, put it under the curing lamp, and then 
test the back of it very gently with a cocktail stick to see that it's actually dried. And then you just go on with all your colours, doing it like this. With the burgundy colour, or if you use a very dark colour, like I did for this, I think it's a peony, I'm not sure. They don't like going under the UV lamp. The darker the colour, the more time you have to put them under the UV lamp. So if you do a dark colour, cure it on the front, the side that you're painting, for a little bit longer than you would the others and then flip the mould over and cure it on the other side. I had a problem when I demolded this um, with the uh, tattoo sticking to this burgundy colour. So yeah, so you would stick this under the curing lamp like that. Give it, an, give it maybe two, I gave each colour I think about 60 seconds and then when that's done flip it over and give it say 60 seconds on the other side before you do your next color that may help you avoid getting the tattoo stuck to the mold
Now this is going to be the colour that's going to be used as the background. I chose this gold because it has a sort of orange gold and I thought it was nice. It went well for what I consider tiger colours. So I want eight good dollops of that. And just pour on your lovely tiger gold. Now go around the edges. Bear in mind there is a there is a tattoo in there. So go carefully. You can use your heat gun. Yeah, I mixed up too much resin again. I don't know why. <laughs> but this is when I stick them in my little pyramids or a little lid of some kind, so never really gets wasted. So I'm going to put it onto my level surface now. And then I'll top it up. And as I was taking the mould away from the resin, this part of the burgundy flower and a little bit on the leaf above it, they stuck to the mould. I did it very, very carefully and I was fortunate that it didn't actually just tear off the flower and the leaf, but it left this sort of crinkly effect. And since the tattoo is sticky anyway, um, you have to put a protective coat on it. Hopefully this not only protects it, but it will help to sort of calm that where it's stuck to the mould down. It won't really show. It just looks like um, a, a details on the petal of that particular flower. here we have the finished product. You can see, I, I'm going to call it a peony because I don't know what kind of flower it was, the burgundy coloured peony. You can see it still has that sort of pulled away effect but it looks like details on the petals themselves so I'm happy with that, it worked out. And the flower between the daisies is just gold but you might not choose that part of the, of the mold, you might cut it off. Now here is an interesting comparison. Before I made the one that we've just made together, I made the one on the right, and that one was done using the same method, putting the tattoo in direct contact with uh, the silicone mold, but instead of making the the mica powder wet, I just dry brushed all the mica powders on. Now they are exactly the same colours. How the colours shine when you put the powder into the UV resin. If you were thinking, well what if I just dry brush the powder on the back. So, the end of our adventure. Hopefully you got good results. Colourful tiger with his flowers spout bottom and if you did enjoy this adventure would you subscribe ring my bell and like me so that I can grow my channel and we can do more exciting things with resin so thanks very much see you next time bye for now today's project very colorful tiger with the added bonus of 